Welcome to Electron Line. In the last video, we were varying the cross-sectional area. In this video, we're going to vary the conductivity of the path through which the heat will travel. The conductivity is going to be a function of x. So maybe what I can do here is write this as k is a function of x and is equal to 385. So it starts out with the heat conductivity of copper, but then it decreases as you're traveling across. Notice the length is 1.2 meters, the cross-sectional area is 10 centimeters squared, which is 0.001 meters squared. We're going to use the same equation as before, and again, the dQ dt is going to have to be constant because it cannot change as heat travels across it. Even when the heat conductivity changes, dQ dt has to be constant. But that means that the delta t will change as you travel across which means we're going to have to rewrite the equation as follows, that dq dt is going to be equal to k, which is now a function of x, times the cross-sectional area, which is a constant, but times dt dx, because it's going to change as a function of x. All right, how do we solve this? Well, first let's plug in what k is equal to and see what we get. So dq dt is equal to 385 minus 170x times a times dt divided by dx. And now you can see that we need to separate the variables. Moving this to the other side and up this here, the dx goes to the numerator and we have 385 minus 170x in the denominator. On the right side, we end up with a divided by dq dt. Both of these are now constants. So this is a constant, that's a constant. Of course, we're looking for the dq dt. That's what we're solving for. And then we have the dt, the temperature, on the right side. I believe now we're ready to integrate. So we're integrating the left side. We're integrating the right side. Temperature changes from 0 to 100. We're just finding the absolute value of the temperature change. And on this side, we travel from 0 to 1.2, but if we want to integrate this, we're going to need a proper differential. So let me move the dx over a little bit. So dx over here, we're going to need a minus 170. Of course, if we multiply the numerator times one, minus 170, we need to do the same to the denominator, otherwise we've changed the integral. We can now integrate both sides. When we integrate both sides, we get on the left side, 1 over minus 170 times the natural log of 385 minus 170x. We're going to evaluate this from 0 to 1.2. And that is equal to, on the right side, we have a divided by the QDT times t evaluated from 0 to 100. All right, now we're ready to evaluate this integral. So let's go over here. We need some more room. On the left side, we have 1 over minus 170 times. When plug in the upper limit, we get 170 times 1.2 subtracted from 385. I think I'll grab my calculator. Okay, so 170 times 1.2 subtract that from 385. We get 181. So that means we get 1 over minus 170 times the natural log of 181 minus the natural log of, when we plug in the 0, we get the natural log of 385. And on the right side, well, the cross-sectional area here is 0 0.001 divided by the QDT, which is what we're looking for, times, when we plug in the limits, we get 100. All right, now next, notice that if we subtract two natural logs, that's the same as the natural log of the quotient, and we'll move this across over here, we end up with the natural log of 181 divided by 385, and notice that this will be a negative quantity because the, the fraction is less than 1, and that is equal to 100 multiplied times that is 0 0.1 divided by dq dt, and multiplied times the minus 170, which I got from the other side. And then you can see that the negative I get from here will cancel out the negative I get from there. 
So now what we get is the natural log of 181 over 385 is equal to minus 17 divided by dq dt. And finally, dq dt is what we're looking for is equal to minus 17 divided by the natural log of the fraction, 181 divided by 385. Now we're ready to evaluate this. So 181 divided by 385. Take the natural log of that, which is a negative 0.75, and we divide that into the 17. So now we know that this is equal to dq dt is equal to 22.52 watts. And that's kind of what we would expect. Notice that um, we got a value between the two that I don't, I don't have them on the board anymore because if it was all copper, it would have been 32. If it was all aluminum, it would have been around 17. We got a value between the two. So that seems fairly reasonable. And that's how we do that.